is advised. Hey everyone, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering you a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial membership. All you need to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash bgunlocked. The link is in the description below, and now enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and today I'm doing a how to play for a very, well not very, but an older game, Pandemic. But not just Pandemic, I will also be doing State of Emergency, On the Brink, and In the Lab. I will be going over how to play all of these expansions as well. And if you've been a fan of my channel or, or are new, I have done two full run-throughs of Pandemic with all of the expansions. Not everything from all the expansions, but I have done so, and I figured it might be beneficial to do a how to play that covers everything. So this is going to be quite the experience. Now, like I mentioned, I will not be covering everything that is in each of these. I will mainly be going over how to play, obviously, Pandemic, and then how each of these three expansions change the game and then how to incorporate all of them. One quick note I would like to say is I do not recommend playing Pandemic with all of the expansions as it is extremely, extremely difficult. But nevertheless, it has been requested I also do this how to play, so here I am. Um, and so we're just going to go ahead and get started with how to set up the board with all four, well, the base game, and then all three expansions. Okay, so the first step you're going to do is you're going to set out the base board and the four different colors. If you have all the expansions, you will have these Petri dishes. If not, you just have the base game, then you won't. However, uh, everything I'm going to be showing is going to be incorporating somewhat of all the expansions, so that's the first thing that comes with the On the Brink expansion. But nevertheless, you'll set out the four different cubes, uh, four different colored cubes, and the board. The next step you're going to do is you're going to place the Outbreak marker, which is this up, down, left, right little track, and the disease tokens. Now, that's what's going to look like these if you just have the base game. If you have the uh, in the lab expansion, you're going to get these cure vials. So just for the sake of looking pretty cool, I'm going to place those vials down at the bottom. You might notice that purple symbol over on the right. That sticker comes with the state, uh, state for Emergency expansion, which adds what's called the Superbug. We're going to go ahead and ignore that for now. But So for right now, we're just doing the base game setup, so you will place the four dials. Once again, if you don't have the expansions, then you will just be placing the corresponding uh, regular tokens down there, and then once again, the outbreak over on the The third left. thing you're going to do is you're going to place the infection rate marker, which is this icon right there, that little token. You're going to place that over on the very first two under the square box that says infection deck. Then you're going to shuffle the infection deck, which looks like this, and on the back actually has the names of the cities. You're going to shuffle that, and then you're going to reveal nine cards. So whenever you're revealing cards, I'll just reveal them up here. The very first three, you're going to place the corresponding colored cube on that city. You're going to place three of them for each. Then you're going to do the same thing for the next three, but only placing two cubes per color. And then for the last three, you're going to be placing one. So for example, on the first three, I have Baghdad, so Baghdad is going to be over, obviously, in the Middle East, so we will place three cubes there. If I can even find Baghdad, it's right in the middle. Then, the, third, the second card for that is Santiago. Santiago is down here. I'll place three cubes there. And then we will have three cubes for Kolkata, which go over here. So those three cards are now done. Next, we have Kinshasa which will be over here in the middle, but you're only going to be placing two cubes. Then we have Buenos Aires, so then we will place two cubes for Buenos Aires. And then we have Manila, which will be getting two cubes, and Manila is right there. And then last, we have Jakarta, which will be getting one cube, because it's in the third uh, set of three. Then we have Ho Chi Minh City, which will be getting one cube, and then Chennai will be getting one black cube. Then after you are done infecting those 
those cities, those nine cities, you'll place the cards that you drew in the discard pile and then the rest of the infection deck on the spot that says infection deck. And that will be the third thing you do. All right, the fourth thing you do is you are going to be shuffling up the roll cards and distributing one roll to each person. Then you will be taking the matching pawn that corresponds to the color of the card and you will actually be placing all of these up in Atlanta, which is in the middle of the board over in North America. So you will take all of those, place them on the space for Atlanta, and then before you uh, deal out the cards, the you know the player cards for each person, you're going to actually be going through the event deck. Well, not go through it. You will take the event cards, you will shuffle up what you have, and you will be putting in two cards per player uh, into the player draw deck. Then you will shuffle this deck and then you will uh, hand out a certain number of cards depending on the number of players. In a two player game each person will get four cards. In a three player game each person gets three cards. And in a two player game each person gets two cards. Now you might be wondering where, where, where am I getting all these events? Well a lot of them come with all the expansions so that's the rule for whenever you have a bunch of events you will be uh, taking two per player, shuffling them into the deck. So since I have a four player game set up, I will be handing out two cards per player, and that will be their hand. Now these cards can actually be played face up because it is a fully cooperative game, or you can hold them to yourself and then do that uh, cooperative nature where each person can talk to one another. Then you will actually be holding on to this deck because you have one more thing to do with it. But that is the fourth thing that you do. The fifth thing you do is you're going to actually be dividing up that player, uh, the player deck into piles equal to the number of epidemics that you are going to be putting in. For this how to play, I'm going to be using four epidemics, but you can do four, five, or six depending on the difficulty that you want. You can have four, which is beginner. Five will be normal and six will be uh, will be hard. So then, so you even them out uh, as evenly as you can. Then you will take one epidemic and put one on top of each pile, and then you will shuffle each individual pile so that the epidemics are dispersed relatively evenly throughout the the player deck. And you will do that for each. Um, for each pile, then you will stack the stack the the player deck, and then you will place that deck on the player deck associated spot, which is up there. One of the next steps that you will do is you will actually place a research center in Atlanta, because that is where the CDC starts, and then you will take the remainder of the the research centers, and you'll just place them somewhere near the board because more can be built. And the last thing that you do for setup just for the base game is you decide who is going to be first player. So everyone will look at the cards in their hand and whoever has the highest population will be the first player. In this case New York and you can find the population up here has a population of 20,000, 20,000, 20 million. So they will, the medic is going to be the first player and then you will go in turn order clockwise. In this case, it would be the medic, then the dispatcher, researcher, scientist, you know, going around the table accordingly. And that is the setup for Pandemic. Next, I'm going to be altering this setup a little bit with the On the Brink. This is going to be the next expansion that I will be going over. That's upside down, On the Brink. Uh, the next expansion that I will be going over, and I will be incorporating a few things from this one. This is the very first expansion that they came out with, and it's going to have a... Uh, it's going to be an easier setup than the other two, because the other two add a little bit more complexity. The one thing I will not be going over in this booklet is the Bioterrorist. Which is a which just basically completely changes this entire game that it's not even pandemic anymore. But I will be going over a few of the other things in here as I will note. So let's go to the setup for On the Brink. So a few things about the On the Brink expansion is that it does include a way for pandemic to be played with five players. If you do decide to play with five, then you would hand out the rolls and everything like normal, and each player would still get two cards. It does not go to one card per player or get lower like that. The other thing it does is that whenever I said to include a number of 
epidemic cards equal to the, the difficulty, four, five, or six. Well, On the Brink does give you a challenge to where you can add seven epidemics for a legendary game, which is, uh, it is certainly that. Um, then what the first challenge is for On the Brink is that it includes the virulent strain epidemics, and that is what these cards are. And you can tell what expansions they uh, go to by the symbols down at the bottom. Simple enough to in, uh, incorporate for setup. Instead of adding these epidemic cards, you replace these with these virulent strains. And what this challenge does is it basically will incorporate, it will make one of the four uh, diseases a, a specific strain, which will give them special abilities, as you can see on the bottom. For example, this one is government interference. To leave a city with virulent strain disease cubes, the player must first, on that turn, treat at least one virulent strain cube in that city. Which I know that this is the setup, so you might not know how to play quite yet. I just want to explain that the virulent strains will make one particular color uh, have special abilities. Now for setup, you do exactly like you normally would. You would divide the player deck into equal piles according to the number of epidemics that you would be putting in. For how to play, I will be doing four. But once again, instead of these, you will replace them with these. So let's go ahead and do some magic and incorporate these in here. Ha! And that is the setup for the Virulent Strain Challenge. The next challenge that On the Brink brings is called the Mutation Challenge. And what this does is this adds the Horrible and Fifth Purple Disease. So what you're going to do for setup is you're going to take the purple cubes and you're going to place them next to the board with the other four. You will take the vial and you will place that on the, the spot allocated by what this expansion brings, which is where you, that sticker goes. You will place that vial there. Then you will take the these mutation cards, the ones that look like this that say mutation. You will actually take those, and after you have infected the board with those nine cards, you will take those two and you will place them on top of the infection discard pile. Then the last thing you do for setup is you will take these mutation events, and before you actually incorporate the epidemic cards, whether they're the regular ones or the virulent strain, and be, but before dividing out, you know, handing out each player their cards, you will shuffle these three cards into the, uh, the, player, the player draw deck. So uh, whenever you just do that, you will take them and you will shuffle in. Then you will follow the corresponding um, the, the, the steps for the, the base game where you will then uh, deal out the cards to the players, then divide out the player deck evenly, put in the epidemics, and then stack them. And that is the setup for On the Brink. Like I said, this one was a very simple one, the virulent strain and the, the mutation challenge. The next one would have been the bioterrorist, but I am not including that in this how to play. So, next up is state of emergency and I'm going to be doing the setup and doing the changes just like I did for on the brink to incorporate the challenges that state for emergency state of no I was right state of emergency what this brings so let's go ahead and go to setup all right so the main thing that comes with state of emergency is the hinterlands challenge so for setup what you're going to do is you're going to take these two sideboards one side is going to show uh, for blue and yellow, and the other side is going to show black and red. And you'll just easily place them over on the side of the board, like so, that is closest to their color, and that makes it look normal, like this. Then, what I like to do is I just take the, the, the corresponding colors of the diseases, like so I put red over by red, and then black over by black, and then I put blue over by blue, and then yellow over by yellow. Now, if you are using the purple cubes from the On the Brink or State of Emergency, you just place those somewhere near the board where they're just kind of still in the spot. Then, with the remaining tokens, so like whenever you were placing the research centers, you can once again just place those somewhere that makes sense. And then, also with the... Uh, uh, state of emergency, uh, it includes what's called quarantines. Now for the setup, 
you will take four quarantines, unless the colonel is in play, which he is not. But if he is in play, then you would use the six tokens. But for right now, we are just going to be using these four. And you will just place those next to the board as well. The next thing you're going to do for setup for the hinterlands is you're going to be taking these colored discs. And they correspond to uh, yellow, red, blue, and black. And what these do is these are just gentle reminders of what the hinterland affects. So, for example, we have yellow. The hinterlands for yellow affects Kinshasa, Khartoum, Lagos, and Sao Paulo. So you would take the yellow cubes and you will place them over what they affect. So Kinshasa, Lagos, Sao Paulo, and then Khartoum, which goes up here. And you will do this for the other four colors as well. So there's what the yellow discs look like. And they're big enough that three cubes could fit on top. So for Kinshasa, because it already had two, would go on top. But you can put them next to them as well if you don't want to mess around with trying to balance them on a disc. So you will just be doing that for the other colors. And then it will look like this. And that's what it will look like. Then, last, for, uh, what you will do for setup is you will take the hinterlands die and you will place it on top of the infection deck as a gentle reminder that you will need to roll that before drawing infection cards. The next challenge that State of Emergency brings are what's called emergency events. And basically, what you do for a setup is you will take a number of emergency events randomly equal to the number of epidemics that you're using. And then, whenever you are dividing out the player deck, like you would for putting in the epidemics, you will also put an emergency card. So for example, I used four epidemics, virulent strain epidemics, uh, might I remind you, then I would also include one emergency event with those, then I would shuffle each four of those decks, and then I will stack them on top of one another and then place that back onto the, the player deck spot. The next challenge that State of Emergency brings is called the Superbug Challenge. Now, this is similar to the mutation challenge that On the Brink had. In this case, where you had mutation cards that were from On the Brink, you also have what's called Superbug Mutation Cards, which have the State of Emergency icon down at the bottom. So. I have to clarify that this cannot be combined with the mutation challenge from On the Brink. You have to pick one or the other. In this How to Play, I'm going to actually forego the mutation challenge for On the Brink, and I will be using the Superbug challenge. And you can also see it says Superbug up there, once again, with the State of Emergency icon. So, the first thing you do is you still add ye yellow, purple cubes to the supply. In this case, 24 cubes to be specific. Then you will take the vaccine doses, which are these green, green pills, and you'll place those next to, next to the board. Uh, you can place them next to the purple cubes. Then you will also take research centers, which are, uh, well, they're actually vaccine factories. You will place those next to the supply, and you can have those go over where the where the regular research centers are, those can go there. You will also still include the quarantine markers. And that's the first thing that you do for the Superbug Challenge. The next thing that you do is whenever you are infecting cities, which remember is whenever you are drawing nine cards, you will actually replace one of the cubes from the first, fourth, and seventh card that you draw with a purple cube. So for example, I have the discard pile right here. The first city that we infected was Baghdad. And so instead of three black cubes, one of them is going to be a superbug. So that is the first one. Then second, third, then fourth is Kinshasa, which had two yellows. Now it's going to have one yellow and one purple. And then, so that was the fourth one. And then fifth, sixth, and seventh, was Jakarta. So instead of the red cube, it's just going to be replaced with a purple cube. And that is the next thing that you will do for the Superbug Challenge. The next thing that you do is you will take those Superbug Mutation cards and you will place one on top of the discard pile and then the other one on top of the draw pile. 
If you're playing with the Hinterlands expansion, right underneath that Hinterlands die. Then, if the Medic is in play, which he is, you will actually be replacing him with the Superbug variant of him. And it says use only in the Superbug challenge, and it has the icon for State of Emergency. So he will be getting placed, and the reason why is because he has a special ability that corresponds to the Superbug itself. And the last thing that you do, once again, is going to correspond to this player deck. Before uh, you put in the epidemics, you are actually going to, once again, divide that out. So you should do all of this before you actually shuffle the deck. So, you, in the Superbug Challenge, there are these bonus cards. And you are going to choose a number of them, not choose, but you will randomly select a number of them equal to the number of epidemics that you are putting in. In this case, once again, it was four. So whenever you are dividing it up, you will do four piles. In this case, so far, I've done the Verlin Strain epidemic, so there's four of that. Then we are also doing the Emergency Event Challenge, so there's going to be four of those. And then we would have four bonus cards as well. So you would add all three of those to the four separate decks. Remember, because it's four epidemic cards, shuffle each pile individually, and then stack them, and then you will place that onto the player deck spot. One last thing that I have to mention, if you have been following along for this how to play and setup, is that because you cannot combine the mutation uh, from On the Brink and the Superbug mutation, you will take out these mutation events from the player deck as well. These are only specific for the On the Brink mutation challenge, not the Superbug mutation. And that's the setup for State of Emergency. Next, I will be going to the setup for In the Lab. And this expansion is probably the most complex out of the three. So I highly recommend that if you do an expansion, you do it with just this and you don't add anything from the others. But this is a how to play with all the expansions. So we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna have a lot of fun. And for the remainder of this how to play, I'm going to remove the other three players and just show actions from one player. But understand that playing the solo, it actually does have a variant for solo mode. I will not be going over that at all. I will just be demonstrating the actions and how to play this game with one person because in the lab adds quite a bit. So let's go to setup for in the lab. Okay, so for the in the lab expansion, it comes with the lab challenge. The first thing you're gonna do for setup is you're gonna set up the lab board. I kind of like to have it underneath the board. It tends to work out for me. And then you will place all five of the Petri dishes on the circular spots like so. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take what's called the sequence cards and you're gonna shuffle them up and then you will draw one face up from the top and you will place it on the sequence spot right here on top of the of the lab board. The remainder of the deck could just go next to it, but you will draw one card and place it up top right there. Now, if you are playing with the Superbug and the Lab Challenge, you can actually combine these two. And the, during setup, whenever you are doing the Super Mutation setup from the State of Emergency, you will take a purple cube and you will place it right here on this treat action space. So right there. And the one thing that I cannot stress enough is whenever you are doing in the lab actions, do not do an action that would remove this one purple cube. Because if you do so, you are for sure going to lose because you cannot cure the super bug. And so whenever, keep this in mind as I'm going through the lab actions that just just don't get rid of the purple cube, but you will place one there. That is your only chance to get rid of the super And that's the setup for Pandemic and its three expansions. In Pandemic, you and your team are members of the CDC trying to control a pandemic. Uh, you have a multitude of actions, especially with all of the expansions uh, added. So... For this how to play, I'm going to try and break it up into those different expansions. I'm going to explain what you can do for the hinterlands, what you do for in the lab later, but I will basically be going over how to play Pandemic and what uh, the expansions bring um, to add a lot of different ways that the game can go. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and learn how to play Pandemic. In Pandemic, each player will take four actions, then they will draw two cards from the player deck, and then they will infect cities equal to the number 
of uh, you'll draw cards equal to the number that is underneath the infection discard pile. So we'll be going over the different actions, then what drawing cards can look like, and then what infecting cities can look like. So in Pandemic, you also have four ways that you can move. Four, four ways that you can move, and they're relatively, relatively simple. The first way that you can move is throughout the board, you will see these whitish, yellowish lines that, uh, that correspond, that, that, that like connect the cities to each other. So one of the actions you can do is you can drive slash ferry. And simple enough, you just move one space along the connected line. That is, that would be one of your actions. Another way, is you can do what's called a direct flight. And a direct flight will correspond to the cur the cards that you have in your hand. In this case, the medic has both New York and Paris in his hand. And what he could do is if he really needed to get to Paris, he could discard the Paris card. And this could be from anywhere on the board. And he would discard it, it would go to the discard pile, and then he would take his pawn and move to the city that matches the card that he discarded. So that is the second way that you can move is a direct flight, discarding a card in your hand to move to that city. The third way that you can move is that you can do a charter flight, which is you can discard a card that matches the city you're in to go anywhere on the board. So let's say that the medic really needed to get down to, uh, we'll just say, we'll say, you know, wherever that is. Uh, Kolkata, right there. He could, because he has New York in his hand, he could spend one action to move to Washington, a second action to move to New York, discard New York, goes in the discard pile, to take a charter flight that lets him go anywhere on the board, and he could go to Kolkata. And that's how he could get over there. That is a third action that you could do, is take a charter flight. The fourth action that you can do is take a shuttle flight, and this requires multiple research centers. Remember, the research centers are these, these white buildings, is you can move from a research center to another space with a research center. So if he started in Atlanta, he could just take a shuttle flight from Atlanta over to Algiers if there was a second research center there. So that is a fourth way that you can move in Pandemic. Another action that you can do is you could build a research station. So what you do is you have to discard a card that matches the city that you're in and you build a research center there. So in this case, you would have, if he had New York in his hand, he could go to New York, you know, one, two, you know, take a driver ferry. So one, two would be two actions. Then he could discard New York goes to the discard pile and places a research center right there in New York. Now, I would not recommend doing that. My recommendation is to space out research stations because it makes shuttle, shuttle flights uh, that much more efficient and because you don't want so many research centers so close together for a specific action that I will describe later. But that is uh, one of the actions building a research station. Another action you can do, and this is probably the most important action, at least the second most important action in the game, and that is treat disease. If you are in a space with a disease cube, you can spend one action to remove one disease cube. So in this case, if the medic was down here in Santiago, he could spend one action to remove one cube. That is normally the case. The medic specifically, each person has a special ability on their card. The medic specifically, when he, re when he treats a disease, he removes all cubes of that color. So in this case, if he spends one action to treat a disease, he would actually remove all three of them. But for other players, you have they would have to spend one action per cube. So let's say this wasn't the medic, it was the scientist. If she was there, she could spend one action to remove one cube. Uh, or if she felt like it could spend three of her four actions to remove all three cubes from Santiago. And so that's it's as simple as that. That's how you treat a disease. Another action that you can do in Pandemic is share knowledge. Now, this allows you to give or take cards from another player 
uh, if you are both in the, the city that matches the card that you're taking. So, for example, if the, if the medic and the scientist were in the same spot, the medic on his turn could spend one of his four actions to give Santiago to the scientist. Or, vice versa, if it was his turn and he wanted Santiago, he could t spend one of his four actions to take Santiago from the scientist. Now, you might be wondering, why do you want to trade cards? Well, that is very important for this very uh, last action that you can do. The last action that you can do in Pandemic is discover a cure. Now, normally in base Pandemic, this is what your goal is. You want to discover the four colors, the four, uh, uh, a cure for the four diseases, which is yellow, red, blue, and black. With the superbug, that adds, that makes it a little bit different, and the lab makes this a little bit more um this action a little bit more complicated but i'll go over that later in base pandemic your last action is discover a cure which you if you are at any research station so for example if the medic was in atlanta he would discard five city cards of the same color to discover the cure of that corresponding color so in this case he moves up to atlanta he happens to have five blue cards which you remember okay Sharing knowledge, that is one way to get cards. If it, let's say he only had let's say he only had four and he really needed a fifth blue one and someone in New York had the fifth blue one, well on his turn he could have if he started in New York, he could have spent an action to take New York, because they're in the same city, that's one. Then he could move to Washington for two and then move to Atlanta for three and for his fourth action he now has five blue cards that he could discover a cure. So he would discard these five blue, and then he would cure blue, which would, that would be one of the four diseases that they have to cure. So you would do that exact same situation, that exact same action for yellow, red, and black. You would need five yellow, you would need five red, and you would need five black. One thing to note is you can do this at any research station. You do not have to have a research station in the corresponding color for the disease that you're trying to cover. That is actually a different pandemic. So that is it. That is the all the uh, actions that you can do uh, in base pandemic. Okay, so now we're going to get into some of the actions that you can take from the state of emergency expansion. On the Brink really just added a, a few variants that really affect the player deck, so I'm actually not going to be going over a whole lot of those until I get to drawing cards. So right now we're going over actions. So, remember how one of your actions can be to drive or ferry? Well, that's where these kind of, um, these discs come from. Because as a drive or ferry action, a player in a spot with one of those discs can move to a hinterlands location. Now, what is a hinterlands location? A hinterlands location is this big, you know, colored circle right in the middle. Thematically, this is representing the diseases that are being spread by various animals that kind of are closest to these specific cities. So, as an action, you can drive or ferry from any of the, the blue discs or, you know, any of the discs to that particular spot. And vice versa. If you are moving from a hinterland spot, you can go to any of the cities that it connects to. It does not have to be the one that you moved from. So, that is something that you can do for the hinterlands challenge. Another rule that's different and specific to the hinterlands challenge is the share knowledge. Now, in the base game, whenever you were sharing knowledge, you had to be in the matching city uh, to give or take that specific card. If players are in the same hinterland spot, you can give any city card uh, to the other player or take any city card as long as it matches the color of the hinterland spot that you are in. So this example right here with the medic and the scientist, they could give any blue card to one another or take any blue card from one another. This might be a way, uh, an easier way for players to give cards to the corresponding players uh, without having to try and meet up in that specific city. So that is something that does change with the Hinterlands Challenge. A new action that you can do from the Hinterlands or the State of Emergency expansion is place quarantines. Uh, on your turn, you just place a quarantine marker on the city that you're in with the two side face up. 
what quarantines do is they uh, prevent diseases from placing uh, from disease cubes from getting placed on that spot. So in this case, if Santiago was drawn, then, and there was a quarantine there, it would flip over from two to one. And then if it happened again, it would go from one and then the, the token would be removed. That is a ninth action that you can do is place quarantine mark. All right, now on to the super bug challenge and actions that you can do because of that challenge being added. Basically, the first action that you're going to be doing with the Superbug Challenge is discovering a cure. Now, this is completely ignoring the In the Lab expansion for the time being, but whenever you are playing with the Superbug, you can, at any research station, use a Discover a Cure action. And you discard five city cards. They do not all have to be the same color, but two of those cards have to have a Superbug cube in them. So, in our... In our, you know, setup, the the cities that have one is Baghdad, Jakarta, and Kinshasa. Well, in this example of the action that I'm given, let's just say that two cards, let's say Kolkata and London, have a superbug. On the board, they don't, but in this example, they do. So... As you can see, I'm discovering a cure. It does not; have, they do not all have to be the same color. So London and Kolkata have a superbug. Um, the medic, as an action, will discard five cards to discover a cure for the superbug. Now, the superbug challenge creates an alternate way to win. It is no longer um, just discover the four the four cubes uh, like it is in base pandemic. The, there's one way to, or there's really two ways to win. One, it is you discover a cure for all five. Or you discover a cure for all four, and there are no purple diseases left on the, on the board. Now, going back up here. With the research or discover a cure action, what you do after you discard the five cards is you will take the research station and you will replace it with a vaccine factory, and then you will take one of the vaccines and you will place it next to that vaccine factory. And now you have a vaccine for the superbug, and those uh, little vaccine doses can start being distributed uh, throughout the board. So now uh, that is one of the actions for the superbug challenge. The second action that you can do in the Superbug Challenge is build a vaccine factory. However, you can only do this after you have discovered the cure for the Superbug. So, in the example I gave beforehand, we did that. Yay! There's a cure for the Superbug. Now, as an action, the medic could just remove this research station from the game, replacing it with a vaccine factory, and once again, placing a vaccine dose next to that. A couple things to note is that you can do shuttle flights between research stations and vaccine factories, and you can do shuttle flights between vaccine factories. So, so it does give you a little bit more options of maneuverability within the game. But one, there are four vaccine factories in, in the game, in the Superbug Challenge. And so once all four have been built, then uh, you cannot do this action anymore. And another thing to keep in mind is you cannot discover a cure at a vaccine factory. So the discover a cure action, which is where you need five cards of the same color, uh, can only be done at a research station. So you gotta keep in mind of not to remove all research stations uh, just to get vaccine factories out. So that is the second action you can do with the Superbug Challenge. The third action that you can do is collect a vaccine. So if you are in a spot with a vaccine factory, you would transfer any number of vaccine doses to your roll card. So in this case, let's say over time that vaccine factory in New York has produced four vaccine doses. So the medic could take all of them if he wanted to, or if he wanted someone else, let's say the scientist was there, let's say he wanted the scientist to help out a little bit in distributing vaccines, then he could leave, he could leave one or he could leave two. Let's say he decided to be nice, he will leave two and the medic will take two. That is the collect vaccine action. And the last action that you can do with the Superbug Challenge is distribute a vaccine. Superbug is a different type of beast. Normally with a treat disease action, you could remove a cube uh, um, that's in the city that you're in. Superbug cubes cannot be removed in such a way. The only way to remove a purple cube 
is by having a vaccine on your roll card. So in this example, after the medic has just gotten two vaccines from New York, he finds himself in Baghdad and he can do one of his four actions to distribute a vaccine and you would remove all purple cubes in that spot. So for that action, you would remove a vaccine dose, place it back in the supply to remove all purple cubes in that spot. Let's say Baghdad had two. Well, that does not mean you do not have to spend two vaccines for each cube there. One vaccine will get rid of all purple cubes in the city that you're in. So that is the only way to be able to get rid of superbug, uh, you know, purple cubes out on the board by building wreaths or building vaccines uh, factories, picking up vaccine fa uh, vaccine doses, and then go into the spot and you know distributing that vaccine. So those are all the actions that you can do for the superbug challenge. Okay, so now we are going to be going over the lab actions, and this with this expansion. Whenever I said anything about, you know, discovering a cure, you know, discard, you know, discarding the five cards of the same color, or in the Superbug Challenge, discarding five city cards, two of them have to match a space with a Superbug cube in it, all that goes out the window when playing with the In the Lab expansion. So, this whole board is going to be how you cure diseases. And there's a few things to keep in mind when playing with this expansion. So one is when you build a research station, you get to do one free lab action. And two is that lab actions, there are specific actions that you can do with this expansion that have to be done at a research station. And remember, research stations are the white buildings, not the vaccine factories, which are the, which are the green buildings. So a lot of the actions that I'm gonna be going over can only be done when you are at any research station. It doesn't have to be in any particular city, but just at any research station. So I'm gonna be going over the, the actions that can be done for in the lab. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to this expansion, like I said before, is whenever you build a research station, whether it's by an event or by any, any other means, if a research station gets built, you get to do one free lab action. The second is that whenever you treat a disease, like normal, one of those cubes that gets uh, removed from the board can be placed in one of these two sample dishes. That's what these are called. These are called sample dishes. Then you have the, uh, well, basically, yeah, you have these as, as sample dishes. So the layout of the, in the lab, like I mentioned, you have sample dishes right here. You have the centrifuge dish right up here. You have the separator dish. Then you have the growth dish right there. So, and that does, those names do matter. So sample dishes, which is whenever you treat a disease. Uh, so if I just treated a disease in Santiago, one of those yellow cubes could get placed here, or they can get placed there. The, you have the centrifuge dish, which is right up here, growth dish, and the, uh, the separator dish down there. Then you have sequence cards that are gonna go here. You have characterization cards that are gonna go here. And then you are gonna have test uh, spots that are gonna go there. So that is the layout of the lab. All right. One of the first actions that you can do in the lab, which is once again, you have to be at a research station, is characterize a disease. So based off of the sequence cards, they can be characterized based off of the vile colors that are up on the top right. So for example, this one right here could be characterized with only a red or a blue card. So what you do while at a research center is you take, you discard a card, well, you take a card that matches the color here or here, and that is going to tell you what disease you want to uh, you want to cure. And this could vary for any number of reasons. If you want to cure red, well, there's r three red spots there. These grays can be any color, and then you have one blue. So let's say you had mainly blue in your hand, which the medic had New York. You would place a blue card right there in that characterization spot. And then you would take the corresponding vial and you would place it up at the top to show that 
That now that is the sequence card you are going to be using to discover your uh, your blue. So one thing to keep in mind is that a sequence card has to be characterized before you can move cu uh, cubes over from the dishes onto that sequence card. So that is the characterize a disease lab action. The next action that you can do, which is a lab action, is the process a sample. And this is where you're going to be moving cubes along uh, from one sample dish to, to another sample dish. Now, there's a couple ways that, and it, it does kind of kind of uh, show you on the lab on the lab board what this kind of looked like. So, what I'm going to be explaining is what each dish does as you're moving things along. So, let's say we had a few a few cubes that we have picked up from you know doing a bunch of treat treat disease actions. So we have we have this many cubes in that sample dish. So whenever one of the things is you can move cubes from a sample dish to a centrifuge disc. And if you do that up here this icon right there shows that you only move cubes of the, the same color to that spot. So in this case, if you were moving, if you were moving these five, and you have to move all uh, cubes from one dish to the next, you cannot decide to keep some behind. So in this case, the only cubes that would get moved are these. The rest, these three, would go back to the regular uh, petri dishes off to the side of the board. So you want to do this if you want to keep them grouped together. If you are down here and you want to move them to the uh, the separator dish, you would only move cubes that are different. So in this case, it would be one, one yellow, one black, one blue, and one red. And those four would go there. The, the duplicate yellow would go back to its dish on the side of the board. Now, as you can see, whenever you are treating a disease, you are placing them in here. So in this case, for an action like you could, well, let's say it was like that. As an action, I could just move this black up there to the centrifuge dish, and then I could move these these down here because they cross like that. Granted, the, the extra yellow would go away. The other thing is you can move cubes from the centrifuge or separator to the growth dish, and that would duplicate each cube that is there. So, for example, if this... If this was the case, then moving that up here would create another yellow, blue, and then red would get placed in the in the growth dish. So, like so. Then, the other thing you can do is you can move all cubes in one of the centrifuge, the separator, or growth dish to one sequence card, not, not both. So you have to pick one of these to go up to a sequence card. And like I said, a sequence card has to be characterized before cubes get placed on it. So, in this case, if we wanted to spend one of our actions to move from the growth dish up to this one, we could do so. So we would place a blue there, a red there, a red on the red, and a blue on the gray. So the gray represents a uh, like that the cubes that go on the gray spots on those sequence cards match what is being characterized. So in this case, the blue would go there, there, and then the two red, and then the extra yellows would go back to their dish on the side of the board. And that is the process a sample lab action. But one thing to keep in mind here is that if you're playing with the super bug, remember I said you have one purple cube. And whenever you are processing a, a sample, the first time you do that, you can decide to add this to one of the sample dishes. Now, you never want to do an action that would cause the, uh, the purple cube to get removed because that's your only way of actually curing the superbug disease. So, for example, a way that you could remove it is that if you had, if this was your scenario, like so. So you have two purple, two blue, and one, uh, or two red, two blue, one purple, and you decide to move, well, let's say you decide to move all these up to the centrifuge dish. 
Well, remember, only cubes of the same color are going to be going there, so you would be removing the purple cube that you have. So in reality, what you really want to do is you would want to move those to the separator because that would be one of each different color going, going to that, and then the duplicates would be getting removed, the red and the purple. But to characterize and cure the superbug. Remember, I mentioned that sequence cards uh, have to be characterized. Well, there's no purple cards. So to uh, characterize and try and cure the purple disease, you uh, would place a city card in that spot, and the city card has to match a, a city that has a, a purple cube in it. Let's say, for, um, for example, New York. New York does. So New York has a purple. You characterize it. You would place the the superbug on that spot, and then you would be able to to characterize the the superbug. So now a uh, purple cu a purple cube would go would go there, and then you know the the corresponding colors would get placed on that on that sequence card. So that is the uh, process a sample lab action. The next lab action that you can do is test a cure. And how you do that is you take a card that matches the cure color, which is going to be blue, and you place it on this spot here, this test a cure uh, spot. Whenever you do that, uh, there's one uh, stipulation that must that you must meet. A cube must be on a sequence card for you to be able to test it. So to ensure that you can start curing, you have to characterize it, which a cube does not need to be on the sequence that tells you which one you're aiming to cure. Then you can move the diseases around the sample dishes to place on the sequence card. Only then can you test it. Whenever you test it, uh, you remove a cube that matches the cure color from any city on, on the board. So in this case, uh, the medic is at a research center. He places the card London down because this is going to be for blue, so it has to be a blue card, and then he can remove a blue cube from the board. And that is the test of cure action. The changes to the base game and other expansions come from in the lab. So the uh, one of the regular actions, which was initially discover a cure, it, which was, you know, removing five cubes of the same color, changes with this. So... With the In the Lab expansion, when you discover a cure, you can only do this when the research line is complete, meaning that you have a sequence card that has been characterized and then has been tested. So, once that is the case, uh, then you have to discard three cards of, uh, you know, of a city matching its color instead of the five. So, for example, remember in the uh, beginning of the How to Play, I mentioned that you have to have five cards of the same color to at the research center to cure it. In this case, once you do this, you only need three in your hand, mainly because these two you've already characterized and you've already tested, so you just need three, in this case, blue cards to be able to find a cure for the um, for the you know one that you're trying to cure. So once you do that at the research center, then you take the vial and you move it to its cure indicator up on where it's supposed to be up at the 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 vial area then you will uh take the the cubes that that match you know they just go in there in the regular petri dishes you discard the cards that were used to characterize and test and then you discard the sequence card then you would draw and place a a new a new sequence card in that spot. And that is how you would discover a cure when playing with the In the Lab expansion. The last lab action that you can do is called Sequence a Disease. What you do is you draw a sequence card and you place it onto a spot. So In the Lab can have two sequence spots. So for a lab action, I could sequence a card. So now we have an option to aim to uh, cure red and then this one in particular actually has a spot for any of these. So any card can be used to characterize that and then, uh, and then get them, you know, get the diseases cured. If you are swapping a sequence card that has already been characterized, if the card that's replacing it, so let's say, 
let's say the card that we were doing for this one was blue. You know, we had the characterization uh, there to say that this was blue, but you know, this was kind of becoming a little bit more difficult. So we decided to sequence it. We get rid of this one and we draw this one. Well, there are no, this cannot be characterized as blue. So if you do that, then you have to get rid of the characterization card, any cubes on it, and then you remove uh, the blue vial, in that case, back to its spot, and then you kind of start all over. However, if you are characterizing or you're sequencing a card and it does match, in this case, let's say we made this one red, well then everything would transfer over. Let's say we had three red cubes and it was characterized as red and we replace it with this one. Well, fantastic, three red cubes would go on here and it stays characterized. So that is something to keep in mind and that's how you sequence a disease. That is all of the actions for all of the expansions. So now after a player has done four actions, they will then go and draw two cards from the player deck, which remember the player deck is this deck right here and they will resolve any epidemics that they draw. Uh, in this case, they will resolve any uh, emergency events that they draw, and then they will discard down to seven cards. So, in this case, the medic ends his turn, he does his four actions, and he will draw, he will draw two cards. So, uh-oh, that actually really sucks, because I legitimately shuffled these. So, this is the perfect example, though, because... If you draw an epidemic or an emergency event, you do not replace your hand or you do not draw up again. So basically these take place of the two cards that you're trying to draw, which remember in here are city cards that you need to be able to cure diseases and, and so on and so forth and move around. So perfect example, the emergency event here says patient zero. This is one of the challenges that we added to the deck. So this says draw one card from the infection deck bottom so you would take the infection deck and you would draw a card from the bottom of the of it. Then it says add one disease cube of this color to the city every turn before infections. So for example, it says Shanghai. So now, uh, so now for patient zero, after every uh, you know after every infection you're going to be adding a card to shanghai because patient zero has now landed it even says play this card and its infection card face up uh discard them after playing the next emergency event so this patient zero is going to start affecting how cards get uh you know how how disease cubes get placed then we have the epidemic Every epidemic, whether it's a virulent strain or a regular epidemic, has three different phases. The first phase is you're going to increase the infection rate, which is up at the top. So now it would go from two, still to two, but it ever increases. And remember, this number indicates how many cards you draw from the top of that infection deck. So because of the epidemic, it now increases. Then you will draw from the bottom of the of the infection deck and add a cube to that uh, to that city. So in this case it's Riyadh. Riyadh is now getting a black uh, a black cube. Then the third thing that says intensify. Intensify means you take the discard pile and you shuffle them. So now all the city cards, that you used, even during setup, that is a horrible first draw. All the city cards that you used to infect cities are now gonna be added back on top. This is what makes Pandemic Pandemic because now you know for a fact, okay, well, Kolkata's been hit, Manila, Chennai, all of these have been, have been affected already. So there's no reprieve that maybe Algiers or Lima might get drawn because they don't have cubes there already. So this is why it's intensified. So you take your discard pile, you shuffle these, and then you add these back on top. And I'm sorry, the the infect is you draw from the bottom and you add three cubes to that spot. So in that case, it was Riyadh. You add three cubes of the color uh, from the card that you drew from the bottom. So those are the 
Uh, those are the three steps of any epidemic. However, we have the virulent strain. And how you determine the virulent strain is that you look at the cities and you, whichever cube, whichever color has the most cubes on the board is the virulent strain, meaning that they are now going to be, they're going to have a special ability. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight black cubes, one, two, three, four, five, six yellows, one, two, three reds, and no blues. So black is now the virulent strain. So now this card says it's a continuing effect. To leave a city with virulent strain disease cubes, the player must first, on that turn, treat at least one virulent strain cube in that city. And what you can do with these is you can place them near the, uh, you know, near the color that is going to be the virulent strain. And that's an effect that's going to happen throughout the rest of the game. Meaning that, for example, from now on, if the medic wanted to leave, no matter how he was moving, driver ferry, sh uh, shuttle flight, charter flight, he would have to first spend one of his four actions to treat a disease, which is not inherently bad. You want to treat diseases, but sometimes you really need to move, and four actions is not a lot. So in this case, to move out of Baghdad, he'd have to spend one of his actions to remove the cubes, and then now he has three to do whatever he wants. So that is drawing two cards and resolving an epidemic and also resolving an emergency event. But normally your two draws are gonna be similar to, to that. At least that's what you hope for. Because um, you're gonna be wanting to draw cards that are gonna either get you to move to a spot that you really need to get to, or you're gonna want cards that are gonna match the color that help you, in this case, treat a disease over in the lab, um, and so on and so forth. But perfect draw for, for how to play. I honestly did not stack that. So that is the uh, draw two cards after a player's turn. And the last thing you do after a player's turn, after drawing two cards, resolving any epidemics, and so on and so forth, is you infect cities. So you will draw cards from the top of the infection deck equal to the number that the infection rate marker is on. So in this case, he will draw one, which is now Baghdad, and Baghdad will get one cube, and each time you draw from the infection uh, deck, it's only gonna be one cube. The only time you ever place three cubes is whenever you are resolving an epidemic and you are infecting a city, which is drawn from the bottom of the deck. So that's one card, and then he is drawing his second card, which is Buenos Aires. So that will get a yellow cube down in Buenos Aires. This is a perfect time to talk about outbreaks. Outbreaks is one of the ways that you can lose the game. So, what are outbreaks? Outbreaks are whenever a cube, a fourth cube of a, of, uh, a particular color is getting added to a spot. Each city can hold three cubes of each individual color, meaning that uh, Buenos Aires, for example, has three yellows. If a fourth yellow were to get added to that spot, then it would outbreak. But a blue, a black, a red, all that can go into Buenos Aires. And then if three of those colors were to get added, it would cause another outbreak. So for example, Buenos Aires, let's say Whenever I drew Buenos Aires, there was already three there. That would mean a fourth one could not get added that would cause an outbreak. Well, what an outbreak does is it means that you now chain, you spread disease cubes of the outbreak color to any connected cities. In this case, one would go to Bogota and one would go to Sao Paulo. Now, what happens if there are multiple like let's say Sao Paulo and Bogota and Buenos Aires all have three cubes on them. Well, that would mean that you would chain outbreaks together. So for example, if Buenos Aires got hit, that would mean a yellow couldn't get added to Buenos Aires, so it would cause an outbreak. Then we would go up to Bogota, which can also not have four yellows, so it would cause an outbreak, which would go to Lima, Mexico City, and Miami. Now, outbreaks never chain back and forth. So even though Bogota and Buenos Aires are connected, 
a outbreak to Buenos Aires would not cause would cause an outbreak to Bogota, but it would not cause another outbreak to Buenos Aires. However, this is what would happen. So Buenos Aires causes an outbreak in Bogota. Bogota, and it also causes an outbreak in Sao Paulo, which would then go up to Lagos and Madrid. But so basically then Bogota wouldn't go down to Sao Paulo and cause an outbreak. Like they, they wouldn't just continue continuously chain reaction. Uh, it like it, it's really each city can have only one outbreak caused by it. But after that is done, you have the outbreak marker. And in your game, you can only ever have seven outbreaks, and the eighth outbreak means you lose. So those three over there, essentially, Buenos Aires outbreaks, that's one. Bogota outbreaks, that's two. And Sao Paulo outbreaks, and that's three. So in one draw, in one infection card draw from Buenos Aires, we had three outbreaks. That is a case that can happen. And this can chain react throughout the entire map if you're not careful of removing uh, those potential hazards. So that is the Infect City stuff. However, there is the Hinterlands boards, which you might be wondering, oh, I haven't talked about those at all. Well, before you Infect Cities, if playing with the Hinterlands challenge, before you draw cards, you roll this die. And this die here has a blank, it has a blue, a yellow, a black, and a red, uh, and another blank. So before drawing cards, you would draw, you would roll that die, and whatever shows up, you will place a cube on the hinterland space, which I have uh, explained before on how you move to those spots. So in this case, I rolled a yellow, meaning I would place a yellow cube on the hinterlands board. Now, this is something also extremely important. The hinterland spaces can also outbreak. In this case, if there were three cubes here from, from neglect or from constantly rolling yellow, and I rolled that yellow, that would cause an outbreak in the hinterlands, which would cause the marker to go up. And it outbreaks to each connected city. So that means it would outbreak in Sao Paulo, in Lagos, in Kinshasa and in Khartoum, all the spaces that have these yellow discs, which in this case, if it if it uh, outbroke in here, which would be one, it would outbreak in Sao Paulo, which would then outbreak in Buenos Aires and Bogota. But there's not enough yellow cubes for that. So uh, in that case, that can happen, you know, in the yellow, in the blue, in the black, and in the red. Those are what the hinterlands add to the board extra spaces where diseases can go and extra spaces for diseases to spread and increase potentials for outbreaks so that is the step you would do before you actually draw cards when playing with the hinterlands challenge when playing with the superbug challenge remember we had the superbug mutation cards and there was one on the top of the infection uh, deck and one in the discard pile so if this card gets drawn, basically you will just follow its steps. One, this card does not count as the number of draws. Remember, this tracker here indicates how many cards you draw. If you draw this one as your first card, it is not one of the two. You still have to draw two cards. So this basically says, if the next infection card has no purple cubes, then you add one purple cube instead of the cube's color. So let's say I drew this for my infection step. Well. Uh, it's Ho Chi Minh City. All right, Ho Chi Minh does not have a purple cube. So instead of adding a red, I would then add a superbug to Ho Chi Minh, Ho Chi Minh City. That is how superbug purple cubes advance. So then you follow the next step. If it does, this card has no effect. You do the infection normally. So then you discard this card to the, the discard pile. So like I said, if the superbug mutation already had a uh, superbug there, then you would just place a, a red cube in Ho Chi Minh. But that card doesn't count as one of the two. So then I would draw another one. Okay, well, it's Riyadh. Well, remember Riyadh had, <laughs> had you know, uh, three black cubes because it was the, the card drawn for the epidemic. Therefore, it would outbreak, so on and so forth. 
and then you would draw the second card that is Shanai. Then you would add a a uh, a black cube there. So that is one of the additions to the Superbug Challenge. Those mutation cards that get put into the infection deck. And that is how you play Pandemic with all the expansions. So. In Pandemic, there are multiple ways to lose and one way to win. And there's a few things that I didn't talk about in uh, in the how to play. So before I go into how you win or lose, I'm going to go over into the, the two things that I can think of. One is eradicating a disease. And this is extremely helpful and something you should aim to do if possible. I wouldn't go out of my way because that can definitely... Your goal is to cure diseases, not eradicate them. But... Eradicating a disease, how you do that is if you remove all cubes of the, uh, like of that color from the board. So if you have cured yellow and you remove all yellow cubes, it is now eradicated, meaning that yellow can never come back onto the board. So what that means is whenever you are drawing from the infection deck, each time you draw a yellow card, it does nothing, like no yellow cubes come back, but it does count as one of your draws. So for example, if you have to draw two cards and you draw two yellow cards, well then you just got away with an infection phase. So now you don't have to add any cubes. So eradicating can be extremely helpful if you can get away with it. Another way that eradicating can be very, very beneficial is during an epidemic. You know, whenever you draw the card from the bottom of the deck and you add three cubes, well, let's say I drew Moscow, but we eradicated black, so now half, like one third of the epidemic is no longer, um, no longer taken a part of if it happens to be that color. So that's something else to keep in mind when playing that with the hinterlands. Boom! If you eradicated blue and you roll blue, nothing gets added. So uh, eradicating can be extremely helpful when it comes to um, playing pandemic. The other one is I've I mentioned events. Whenever you are throwing events into uh, the the player draw pile, events do count towards your hand limit. However, they can be played at any time. It literally says on the card, "Play at any time." So, uh, whenever you are, let's say, you have to discard down to seven. Well, you can actually play, and you have two events. You can play those before having to discard down to seven. So there are um, the bent like the the events, the good events, not the emergency events. The good events are uh, super beneficial, but you might want to consider about timing or um, things like that. So those are the two things that I can think of that um, I didn't talk about as I was as, as I was explaining all the actions. Now, with that being said, there are multiple ways to lose pandemic and really one way to win. So I'm explaining how you lose first. One way you can lose is if you cannot place cubes of a particular color. In my example, when I was go going over outbreaks, I mentioned, oh, if all these go off, we don't have enough yellow cubes to place. That would have actually caused you to lose it's because it's just that disease has gone too rampant. It's out of our hands and it's just taken over the world. So that is one way to lose. The second way to lose is if you have eight outbreaks. So that's another thing to keep in mind. In that example, once again, with all the outbreaks, if they're chaining off all the time, you're going to lose, you know, in a matter of a couple draws. Um, and those those two can, lose conditions can actually happen almost simultaneously. It's like, boom, 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 we have eight outbreaks and we also have no yellow cubes to place. So that's uh, two ways to lose. The third way you can lose is if you run out of player cards to draw. Now, one thing to keep in mind when it comes to this loose condition is that it's not when you run out, it's whenever a player cannot draw two at the end of his turn. So for example, and you can always look at discard piles or uh, how many cards are in the player deck at any time. So for example, you if you're running down and you have four cards left, you could see it, count it, and be like, okay, you have to draw two at the end of your turn, and you have to draw two at the end of your turn. If someone can draw two, that doesn't mean you have two turns left, you actually have three. You will lose at the end of the third player's turn because at the end of their four actions, they are, they're unable to draw two. You've run out of time, the diseases took over. So, you might be like, well, what the hell, how do you win? Well, in base pandemic, you win by curing all four diseases. So yellow, red, blue, and black. By curing those, which once again, in base pandemic, 
you cure diseases by discarding five cards of the same color at a research center. And you do that for the four, the four diseases. That's how you win. Playing with the Superbug Challenge, you win by discovering cures for uh, four diseases and eradicating uh, the purple cubes from the board. So that's how you win when playing with the Superbug Challenge. The In the Lab, once again, just changes how you actually have to discover cures. It doesn't change the win or lose condition. The Virulent Strain, the Emergency Events, uh, those do not change how you... Uh, win or lose. You win or lose like normal. It's only the Superbug Challenge that actually affects how you win the game. So those are the additional rules. Those are the extra, uh, that's how you win and lose. And that's it. That is how you play Pandemic with all of the expansions and most of the challenges. Um, once again, I do not recommend doing this. If you really just want to have a full pandemic experience, like what's the worst of the worst, then I recommend doing everything that I've done here and do the legendary at seven virulent strain, at seven emergency events. You'll have your bonus from the super bug and play with five players. Actually, I think one of these expansions, I don't remember if it can add a six, but why not? Add six, play with six players and see if you can beat it. Um... But other than that, I hope this is helpful. If I missed anything or made any type of weird rule thing, let me know in the comments below and I will make sure to like and love it so it shoots up to the top and people can see the correction. But other than that, I hope this has been helpful. Um, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.